John Jack Frahill was born on the 13th of March 1895 at Ramaroo, the 11th in a family of 14. Educated in Maroo School, from which he graduated to the family trade of shoemaking. A quiet man, he learned his trade under the guidance of his brother Will, a master tradesman of his time. As a member of a very patriotic family, he joined the Abington Company of the Volunteers of the Mid Limerick Brigade. At the time of his death, he was the first lieutenant of Abington Company and full time member of the Mid Limerick Brigade. When Jack was called up to active duty with the column, he was cutting turf in the local bog at Capanook. On departing his home for the last time, Jack left behind his mother, family and his work to fight for the cause of Irish freedom and made the ultimate sacrifice. He lost his life on May the 2nd at Lake Kelly at the hands of the foe. Patrick Ryan Waller was from Anna Maru, born in 1889, the fourth child to John and Nora Ryan. Pat was educated at a Han National School and CBS 6th Street Limerick, graduating to University College Dublin where he was studying medicine. His family disapproved of his involvement with the IRA which he joined while studying in Dublin. He was brought back to the farm at Anna but soon joined the IRA locally. Pat took part in the Drumkeen ambush but it was at Lake Kelly along with his friend and comrade Jack Frahill that the young man lost his life in the cause of Irish freedom. They are buried side by side at Maroot Church grounds. In late April 1921, selected for their tour of duty with the column, Jack Frahill along with Johnny Ryan Trade of the Abington Company, Pat Ryan Waller along with Stephen Ryan Cogan, Michael Godfrey and Jimmy Humphreys of the Maroot Company and the Mid Limerick Brigade left Maroot. They proceeded to the south of the county. The column was under the command of Dunica O'Hannigan, their purpose to engage the enemy and in particular the Galbally patrol of the Green Howards, British regulars, a major thorn in the side of the column. On the 1st of May 1921, while setting up an ambush near Ahafuka Bridge, Shrahal and Not Cork, to intercept Anthony Thornton and the Galbally patrol, members of the Mid East and West Limerick Brigades led by Liam Ford, numbering about 25 in all, were themselves surprised and what started out as an ambush turned out to be a rout. The company greatly outnumbered by British forces led by Colonel Marius and with a far superior and more powerful weaponry. The ambush led to the deaths of two men, Patrick Starr and James Horne. The wounding of Tim Hennessy and Patrick Casey was captured and executed the following day after a trial by a drumhead court The fight at Trahala continuing, the column under fire at Howard's and Ronan's yards, later relieved by Dunnick O'Hannigan and the rest of the column. The column didn't fought a retreat without further loss of life that day. The remaining men made their way to Wimley and were billeted in safe houses locally overnight. On Monday, May the 2nd, May Maloney of Cumbernamon travelled into Wimley checking for enemy patrol. Having heard nothing in the village, she started on her return journey, where she encountered the Galbally patrol at the railway crossing, heading towards Emily. Suspicious of May, they decided to follow her at a distance. She took the low road to avoid being seen, but the Green Howards taking a high road could observe May as she made her way to O'Callaghan's in Lakeilly. Meanwhile, the resting men were at ease, believing they were safe as they had a lookout on top of Ailby's Rock. On arriving in proximity to the men, May announced to the assembly that all was well. May turning to go home, cycled straight into the oncoming Green Hall patrol. She did a U-turn shouting to the men, they are right on top of you. Some of the men followed May to safety. Some of the company set up a defence from the crossroads near O'Callaghan's house. The Green Hall turned away to the right, not following the men, but instead took up a defensive position at the double ditch. Tom Howard and William Reardon were flanking the Green Howards to the right. Tom Howard was shot dead. William Reardon got to a dyke but was wounded. He was later beaten to death. Meanwhile, Jack Frahill and Patrick Ryan Waller were flanking the Green Howards on the left, trying to contain them, under the covering fire of other members of the column. Patrick Ryan was shot and killed and Jack Frahill was wounded and later killed by a bayonet. 
May Maloney had meanwhile gotten back to Wembley and alerted Dunica O'Hannigan and the column. The column arrived on the scene to give assistance, by which time the Green Horde were loading the bodies on an nascent cat to transport them to Galbally for identity purposes. The arriving column intercepted the Green Howards and pushed him back. The battle that ensued lasted several hours. The bodies of the four deceased men, now in the hands of the column, were taken to Hogan's in Loch Gore. The house is situated near Torreton's pub. They had been laid out, wrapped in Hessian sacks, and no time was wasted in the burying of them quickly in the corner of Quinn's Field, some miles from the ambush site. But nature was against the men, and due to a heavy ground frost, in the following days anxiety arose about the visibility of tracks leading to the grave site. Concerns that the burial site would be uncovered, plans were made to reinter the men. Under the guidance of Tom Kyo and members of the Herbert Sound Company, the bodies were moved to Rat Jordan Cemetery. William O'Riordan and Tom Howard were reinterred in September 1921 at the Republican plot in Ballylanders. Later that year, on October the 4th, the bodies of Patrick Ryan and Jack Frahel were once again exhumed and brought to their final resting place in Maru. Charles Barrington of Glinstall made an offer of a plot for their burial, as the local parish priest was reluctant to be part of the last journey of the men. Later relenting, Canon Dewan allowed the men to be buried in Maru church ground. The night before the men were returned, they lay in repose in Caroline Church. People lined the roadsides as the cortege made its journey back to Maru. A larger funeral had not been seen in the area as the local men were laid to rest. In 1923, the monument at Maru was erected to the memory of the men of the Mid, East and West Limerick Brigades who died in the struggle for Irish freedom. Sculpted by water of man, Willem Gaffney. On that fateful day, May 2nd, 1921, the brutality of the battle and the loss of life was later summed up by Mrs. Burke, daughter to Mr. Callahan, both present in Achille on the day of the ambush. Mrs. O'Callaghan was summoned from her home by a Green Howard officer. He ordered her, saying, There is one of him here wounded. You might want to say a prayer for him before we finish him off. He might even be your effing son. He was referring to Jack Frahel who lay wounded. In later life, Mrs. Burke, recalling the 2nd of May, said, I could forget my sins, but I'll never forget Le Kelly. Oh, the blood, the blood. On the 100th year of commemoration for the War of Independence, let us remember our dead, and in particular, Adjutant Patrick Ryan, Anna Maru, and Lieutenant Jack Frahel, Ramaru. Ayesh Day, Ravan Anna